we are surrounded with the concepts of set theory in discrete math. I mean, heck, even the graphics programs we use talk about difference, union, and intersection. I bought my first convertible when I was about 24 years old. It was already an antique at the time, but it was a 1969 convertible Mercury Cougar nice car and ever since then I've enjoyed driving convertibles well hey maybe I want another convertible so I go onto a website and I say all right we have the universal set of all vehicles right vehicles might include everything from pickup trucks sedans convertibles sports cars electric hybrid gasoline motorcycles RVs maybe even and somewhere in here we have a set which would represent convertibles right all right, but one of the other things I like is I like a manual transmission. Yeah, I know automatic transmissions have gotten good enough nowadays that really you don't need to have a manual transmission, but I like a little bit of the feel of the control of the car, but maybe it'll also serve to help protect me from people who wanna borrow my convertible. So we have another set here of manual transmissions. Another thing that I don't like is you know i'm tired of cars not having a color you know all these grayscale cars that are on the road everything from white to gray to you know light gray dark gray silver black you know just that range of colors that are not colors so maybe and i'm going to draw this kind of as a cloud here and i'll tell you why in a minute we'll just talk about the grayscale cars all right so what does this give us well it'll show me what cars are available to be used by dave or something that dave might be interested in so what he wants is a convertible that has a manual transmission but it is not grayscale so what we've got is this subset right here of cars that Dave is willing to consider, all right? Now, why did Dave draw that grayscale as, as kind of this blob? Well, the reason I drew that up as a blob is because really it is something that is a set operation of a bunch of other sets. So maybe we had the white cars, the black cars, the silver cars, right? Then we had gray and maybe, I don't know, something like dark gray, right? And maybe this was light gray. So this blob right here would actually represent the combination of all of these sets put together. So I don't want anything that is light gray or white or dark or black or silver, which would have actually given me kind of this weird looking set like this, right? All right. And maybe there might have been some holes in here somewhere. All right. But you get the idea. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed whenever I did all this discussion was this inclusion of the words that are referred to as conjunctions. I want a convertible and a manual transmission in this car. But I don't want the grayscale, right? And the grayscale would be considered something that is either light gray or silver or black or dark or, you know, dark gray or white. So we've got a lot of these conjunctions in here, these ands, these ors, these buts, these nots, things like that. All right. So let's talk about the terminology and the equations that we're going to use to represent this kind of theory in discrete math. Let's talk about some of the terminology and show the expressions that we are going to use in order to describe these combinations of sets, the sets that are being combined with conjunctions, you know, and, or, not, things like that. All right. And the one we're going to start out with is something called the union. And we'll say the union of two sets, A and B is the set of all elements contained or a member of in either A or B, all right? Now, we actually have a representation for this. We've got set A, 
And then this thing that looks like a big, it looks like a really big capital U, just, just this, this, this U shape, all right? So A union B, that is equal to the set of all X where X is a member of A or X is an element of B, all right? Now, I'm going to change one of the, the, the symbols up here, or one of the words up here. This word, or, there's a mathematical symbol that is used to represent the or operation, and it is a little v, all right? And that little v, basically, is, you can replace it with the word or. We'll talk a little bit more about this or and how it what it actually means whenever we get into Boolean operations and truth tables and so forth. But for now, we're just looking at that little v representing the OR operation. All right. Now, whenever I talked about all the grayscale colors, white, OR, black, OR, gray, OR, silver, we have this, this set grayscale that is equal to any element that is a member of white or black or gray or silver or dark gray or and so forth, all right? So that would be an example of the union. Now we also have something called an intersection. So the intersection, that's the word we're defining here. The intersection of two sets, A and B, is the set of all elements that are contained in both A and B. All right. Now, the intersection, and by the way, the way that I kind of always remembered the U was that union starts with U. Intersection. Well, intersection doesn't start with an N, but that's the symbol that it looks like we're using to define an intersection. So it looks like that, all right? So this intersection, this, this little N, all right, is the intersection of A and B is equal to all the elements X where X is an element of A and X is an element of B. Now, once again, we've got a mathematical symbol that we're going to replace this word and with. And it looks like an upside down V or the caret, all right? Once again, it's got another term that we're going to use whenever we start talking about Boolean, but we're going to use that symbol to represent the and. Now, one last one. And this one kind of comes at the, at, you know, as part of that example. So I had convertibles with a manual transmission that are not um, grayscale. So that was that space right here. So the first of all, the, the, the intersection was convertible and manual transmission. So notice that the portion that is shaded in, we're not going to, I kind of got ahead of myself when I was talking about the grayscale, but the if it's a convertible and it is a manual transmission, then it's in the set that I'm interested in. All right. Now, <clears throat> The last thing, though, is that that set that I was interested in, we want to take out the grayscale colors, all right? And there's a term for that, too, and it's called the difference. So the set that contains all elements of A but not B is called the difference of A and B. It is represented with something that looks like a minus sign, all right? So the difference of A and B is basically, it looks like A minus B. Mathematically, it's not, but we're talking about whenever A is a set, taking out the elements of A that are also in B, that's what this is supposed to look like. And so you've got it defined with X, where X is an element of A and X is not an element of B. 
all right? And so that's basically, that was, I had that union right there, but I've taken out the elements that were the grayscale colors, all right? Now, there's one more that I want to talk about, but it's, it's similar to a difference, except it's not the difference with respect to another set. Instead, what it is is you've got the whole world, the universe, but you're taking out one set, all right? So picture it like this. If I've got the universe and I've got a set in here called A, now, A is everything inside the circle, right? What if I instead want everything that's not in the circle? What if I instead want this shaded portion? Everything that is not A. Well, that's referred to as the complement, all right? And so basically, the complement of A, and, and when, when, you, when you talk about the complement, you have to say with respect to and define what its universe is. So what I'm going to do, hopefully I'll have enough room here to do this, the complement of A with respect to you, and it's represented similarly to this guy, right? So you've got U minus A, but we've got a shorthand for this, and I'll show you what that shorthand is in a minute. Uh, so the complement of A with respect to U is denoted A with a bar over top of it. All right. And that A with a bar over top of it is basically saying everything in the universe, that's not A. And we do have a way of writing it down, but it's very much like this. So it's U minus A is equal to the complement of A, which is basically X, where X is an element. And in fact, there's, with, our, with our set builder notation, we actually could define the universe on the left side of the bar. So X is a member of the universe but X is not an element of A, all right? That's a lot of information there, isn't it? So tell you what, I'm gonna clear this board, we'll do a couple of Venn diagrams, then we'll do an example. So what we've got is the union, the intersection, and the difference, right? Now, each one of these, we're going to do a Venn diagram to show, well, to give you an example of what to expect whenever you take each one of these three operations. I am going to draw a Venn diagram now. Well, let's just say I'm gonna put some different ones up here. All right, now, what I've done is I've drawn nine Venn diagrams. Now, these three have two sets, A and B, that are in the universal set that have an overlap. There's something that they share. This column, these three Venn diagrams, have as two subsets, A and B, but there's no overlap. They are what we refer to as disjoint sets. There is no overlap, there is nothing that they share. And then this last column, these three Venn diagrams, those are two subsets A and B, but B is fully enclosed inside of A. B is a subset of A. So let's talk about the union first. Now remember, the union is everything that is a member of set A or set B or both. And so the union in the case of this overlap is everything that's in A, along with everything that's in B, all right? So there is the Venn diagram you would see. Everything that's inside of this perimeter of B and A, everything is a member of the union. Now, if we have two disjoint sets, basically it's everything that's a member of A and everything that's a member of B, and even though there's nothing shared, still everything that's in either one of those sets is part of the union of A and B. And let's go ahead and write this. This would be A union B, all right? And then this last one, whenever B is a full, is a subset, it's a proper subset of A. Well, it's everything in B 
along with everything in A, which in the case of a subset, this is actually, or a proper subset, this is actually just equal to A. Let's move on to the next one. Now remember, the intersection is just the things that are both in A and B. If it's just in A, it's not included in the intersection. If it's just in B, it's not included in the intersection. So what we have is A intersected with B. And so what we have is the overlap here, these two, where the two circles are, are overlapping. That is the intersection. Now for this disjoint set, Nothing is overlapping. Nothing is shared by both A and B. So the, so the intersection A and B in this case is going to be the empty set. There's nothing there. All right. Now, the intersection of A and B, when B is a proper subset of A, the only thing that is shared is what's in B. So B, in this case, the the, the, the intersection of A and B, when B is a proper subset of A, is just equal to B, all right? Now let's take a look at the difference. Now the difference, when you take B out of A, what you're going to get is everything that is A without or taken out or pull with everything that's in B pulled out. So the shaded portion here where it's just what is in A minus the chunk that's taken out by B, the piece that's shared by B. Now in the case of the difference when you have disjoint sets, well there is no overlap. There's nothing that B is, is including there's nothing in A that is included in B. So in this case, we actually have, whenever they're disjoint sets, A, the difference of A and B is just equal to A. And in the case of the last one, where B is a proper subset of A, well, what we've got is the hole in the donut, right? So it's everything that's in A minus what's in B. So you just pull out that center section. You just pull out what is B. Let me do this again, except this time I'm gonna use some sets that involve some real numbers. Let me erase this. So let's define a universal set. Let's just say that our universal set is equal to the positive integers that are less than, how about seven, all right? And then we're gonna define a, sub, a, a set A such that is X is in the universal set, where X is in the universal set such that X is, we'll just say even, all right? So that will be, let's see, so positive integers, that'd be two, four, six. And that'd be it because anything, anything outside of that would be outside of the universal set. Now let's define a set B. X is in the, univer X in the universal set such that X is divisible by three. And that's going to give us the subset, uh, let's see, so three and six, all right? Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and make a, we'll make a, uh, the, the Venn diagram. And so I've got A and I've got B. Now let's take a look at the elements that are in A and B. First of all, in fact, tell you what, let's just go through the whole universal set. So we've got the universe, all right? Let's just go through the whole universe and figure out where each one goes in terms of this Venn diagram. One, one is not in either of these sets, so it simply goes outside of both subsets. Two, two is in A but not in B. Three is in B but not in A. Four is in A but not B. Five is in neither. Six is in both A and B. And so let's do four different expressions here. First of all, let's take a look at A intersection B, and then we'll look at A union B, and then we'll look at A 
the difference of A and B, and then we'll look at the complement of A. All right, let's take a look at the intersection first. The intersection is what is shared. The only thing that is shared is six. The union is everything that's in A along with everything that's in B. So this is two, four, six, and three. All right, now notice we didn't duplicate six. Just because six is in A and in B, that doesn't mean it's going to appear twice in the union. It is just simply once, that element is once. And in fact, what you could think of is, is the union is everything that is inside of the shapes that are merged together. Another way you could look at it is that it's everything in A plus everything that's in B minus one copy of everything that's in the overlap. In other words, the intersection, all right? A, the difference of A and B. What we've got is two and four, but we take out the six. So everything that's in A, two and four, but we take out the six because it's in B. And then the complement of A. The complement of A is everything that's not in A. And so that would be one, five, and three. All right, and there you go. Now, once we get a handle on this, we're going to start doing some properties, some identities, some theorems, some things that allow us to manipulate these expressions to give us exactly what we're looking for whenever it comes to our subsets and any sort of membership in a collection of items.